Hello and welcome to video 11 of the series. Uh, in the last video we, we did split the processing into different threads for each virtual channel one so that we have uh, each virtual channel on uh, another thread so that we have a um, coherent um, view of the frames on one thread. And today uh, we want to go a level deeper and now have a look at what to extract from the data field of the frame. So if you remember we have this in the team frame itself. Uh, we have this frame data, oops, which is a byte string. So now we want to have a look what's inside there. So um, the answer is simple, there are packets inside. So maybe have said already this, so this is how the packet looks. Uh, so again, a simple struct, yeah, not so simple, but it's okay. You have a packet, a primary header, then you have a secondary header, and then you have the source data field and also in our case we have again a CRC uh, cyclic redundancy check in the last two bytes and it's the same CRC function as for the telemetry frames so this is a little bit of an uh, easier thing so that we don't have to implement another one and so let's have a look at the, at the <clears throat> header first so if we type indicator here which basically just says if it's a telemetry frame or a telecommand so the direction. Then we have the secondary header flag, so if the secondary header is present or not, and in the packets we have to use them. Then we have the so-called application process identifier, uh, so this <clears throat> onboard um, of a satellite certain things are grouped together in an application process, um, so this could be a special instrument or something like that, or uh, yeah, different things have different APITs for short application process interface. Then we have the packet sequence control, which is also, uh, so these are two octets, these are also two octets, and uh, so we have 14 bit of a sequence counter, and then we have grouping flags, so, and they say, uh, the bit values say, uh, for example, 1-1 one, one says we have no grouping, so this is one packet in one go, and then we have, okay, so 0-1 is, then we have the first packet, and then we have some continuation packets, and then we have a last packet. So this is if a packet is 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 too large, then it will be divided. Um, so yeah, then the sequence count, and then we have the packet data length, which is the number of octets of the packet data field minus one. It's important to not forget that. So why minus one? <clears throat> yeah, as you know, uh, the old problem with with zero indexing in areas. So uh, you could uh, the see you see the packet length field is two two octets, two bytes, so the maximum length of a packet is 64 kilobytes. And uh, so 65,536 uh, bytes to be precise. And if you have minus one, so uh, 65,535, then you can put this into these two bytes. Yeah, if you have the six, then you need one bit more. So that's the reason. Um, and then we have a secondary header flag and there you have we have uh, some spacecraft time information so the timestamp of the packet when it was created on the board uh, then packet format info which will be really important and then also some ancillary data and then we have the data themselves in parameter form uh, which will then be later the next step in the extraction and then we have the crc so uh, that's how the packets look like so um, sounds easy. Um, for the packets themselves, yes. So I've already, uh, as we have already seen that numerous times, how to create such a data structure, how to pass it, and so on. It's basically the same. I define a data structure, create an autoparsic parser, and then uh, we can use that. So uh, see, this is the structure of the packet. So I divided it in uh, the post packet header as uh, the secondary header, the data part, and the CRC again. And uh, so the post packet header is, <clears throat> where do we have it? The post packet header, yeah. We have the type. Um, I've excluded this version flag here. Maybe we will take it again later. Let's see. Uh, so, so the type and the post packet type is basically if it's a telemetry packet or a telecommand. And so this is how to get from this word. This is also some, some, some bit oring. So just to get the value out. Um, then if we have a secondary header or not, this is a boolean, then we have the APIT, which we then extract into a word 16. Then we have the segmentation flags or sequence flags, 
Uh, so the sequence this is just an enum value, first count, last, and alone. Ah, uh, I think I should do an EQ or enum. Would be good. Um, yeah, and also how to extract them. And uh, so, so basically, we mask the the two most significant bits as specified here. So these two bits, we mask them out in the six, the sixteen bit value, and then uh, check the values, and then we get a first count, last, sixth, and alone. And then here I have absurd undefined. Uh, what this is uh, absurd is a function that you in principle cannot call uh, because it requires a void data type. And um, this indicates that the compiler should, as you, in the, at runtime, you should never get there to this point. And the thing is, <coughs> we have masked out these values, and we can only have these values. Yeah, and we, we cannot have more values, but the GHC doesn't know this. So uh, we, to get the warnings away, we could either use an undefined, but I just put an absurd here. So this indicates uh, we, we will never get there. Um, yeah, then we can also have an idle packet itself, the packet that does not contain data, or it contains a bit pattern and uh, no real data. So this is then marked with the EPID with this value. This is also directly taken out of the standard. This is somewhere in, uh, can, uh, yeah, yeah. So here, idle packets, the application process identifier shall be all ones. So this is from here. Um, yeah, then we have the packet header. We already had this. And then we have the secondary header. So the secondary header, uh, in this case, is, uh, is defined as um, as a sum type. So we could have an empty header. In the case, the the secondary header flag, the primary header is not set. That means we don't have a secondary header. So then we, we generate an empty header, or we have the post standard header. Um, why we don't use maybe because we could have more uh, headers. So, for example, the header for the secondary header for telemetry and secondary header for telecommands are different. So we could then pack them in here uh, even more. So we don't need this in this case, but just for now. Um, and uh, so, how does then this second standard header look like? This is this structure. So we have uh, also a version information, but there's also more in this byte. So flags um, we don't care about for now. Then we have the type and the subtype. And these are the important things because these, these determine what the structure of the packet is. So what packet is this? And this is normally also word eights, but uh, I did uh, create it for them a new type wrappers so that we don't accidentally uh, confuse them. So if you have a function which takes two word eights, so which one is the type, which one is the subtype? You can e quite easily mess this up. So if they have done this new type um, and uh, these, these two new types, then you can't mess them up because GHC will tell you. And then for this, we have also a parser, which basically just wraps the, the any word eight into the, the constructor. Um, yeah, then we have a source ID, which is an 8-bit value. Uh, this is important in in uh, for us not but uh, it's important if you send a command and you have a, 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 you put the source ID there and then it will be put into the telemetry in the resulting telemetry for this command also so that you can relate a little bit the telemetry to the uh, to the command send and then we have the timestamp and this is now a different time format this is a cook time and um, uh, I will show this later. So then we have the parser for this, uh, yeah, for the version, this 8 bit, then we have the post type parser, sub type parser, another any word, and then we have the cook time parser. And then we have uh, a parser for this uh, sum type, uh, which is in case uh, we pass here false, then we return the empty header. So this is then the flag from the primary header. And if we pass true, then we uh, just pass this and uh, wrap it into this constructor. And then we have also a function which uh, calculates the length of the secondary header. So if, if you have a post empty header, then the length is zero bytes. And if you have a post standard header, then in our case, in this case, the length is 10 bytes. And then we have the parser for the packet itself. So we, we parse the header, primary header. Then we parse the secondary header and pass it the, the secondary header flag from the header we just parsed. Linguistics. 
Um, okay, and then uh, we have to calculate the length again. How 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 long the data part is? So we take the the length from this header, and remember we said uh, this is minus one. So we have to add plus one to get the real length. Then subtract the length of the secondary header, uh, and yeah, this DFH means DFH means data field header. So secondary header or data field header is the same thing. It's just that the the secondary header is in the part already in the data field of the of the packet, so that's why it calls data field header. And then we also subtract the length of the CRC, and then we have the length of the data alone. And the CRC length is defined in the CRC file. We have already done uh, some some a series, some episodes ago, and we get this data, and then we get the CRC, and then we stored it. And this is everything. Um, so then we have this. This cook time. This is another time format. It's a little bit easier even. So the cook time looks like this. It has a seconds part, which is a 32-bit integer, and then it has a sub-seconds part, which is a 16-bit integer. And so, so the parser is easy. We just read these two words and put them together. And uh, they also, uh, we need this two UTC time function, which we already had in the CDS time. So what I did, I created a, a new file, a class time conversion, and uh, factored out this thing, this uh, function, the two UTC time, and then implemented instances for the CDS time, which we did uh, also some episodes ago, and did the same for the cook time. And the cook time um, is um, uh, normally also you have, you can configure the epoch for this time, the mission epoch, uh, in the configuration, we will just not do that for now. This would be too complicated. So uh, basically, the packets we will get are a Unix uh, epoch. So we have we can use this system epoch day. So that's basically the same as in the CDS time. And then for we have to calculate the <coughs> um, the subseconds. So we have to get microseconds from the 16-bit value. So the uh, the whole range of the microseconds of, of, of uh, will be uh, put into this 65,000 uh, values. So the max value you can put into um, into the uh, into two bytes, and this is calculated. Then we calculate the picoseconds, and this is the same. And then we generate the UTC time out of it. So it's a little bit different, but should not be surprising. It's it's nearly the same. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the first thing. Second thing, let's look how the how this uh, data is laid out in the team frames. So just to remember, this is the, the the structure, and the only thing we will implement in this video is this gap check, and uh, the real extraction we will do in another video because, as you will see shortly, is a little bit more convoluted than you might think. Uh, also, I did a mistake last, last time. No, it's not a mistake. It's uh, the process of learning while doing this. Um, uh, and I will also talk about that when we implement the gap check. So um, how does this look like? Well, you have some packet one, packet two, packet three. And this can have different lengths. Yeah, so packet does, packets don't have a fixed length. Uh, but team frame always have the same length. So the packets are then put into the data part of the frame. And as you can imagine, uh, most of the time uh, they won't match together. So if this packet, in the, uh, I try to, do, to indicate it as here, so this packet doesn't fit into the rest of the frame. So this packet will be uh, divided and the first part will land in this frame and the next part will land in the other frame. This is called a spillover packet. And um, uh, and then the next packet will be appended. So, and then you could uh, have another packets, or if there's nothing more, then you can, there, there's normally an idle packet put in so that you can fill up the frame, the rest of the frame. And this is uh, why we have this first header pointer field, uh, as you remember. So if the packet starts at right at the beginning in the data part of the TM frame, then this first header pointer will be zero. So this is just an index into the data, which says, uh, okay, in this part, for example, we have a spillover packet. So the end of the packet is here in this frame and the, the, the previous part is in the, in the previous frame. And uh, 
the first header pointer says, okay, the first header of of the next valid packet is here at this location. Yeah. Um, okay, and this brings us some difficulties in parsing this. Because the first idea would just be, okay, we extract just the byte strings out of the frame, of the data frame, uh, and then uh, downstream them and then do the same as we did on the NCTRS protocol parsing with just the conduit, uh, an atoparsic conduit, and just pass them and everything is fine. Um, in fact, this was the, my, my very, very first implementation when I did this, and this kind of works, uh, basically it works, but it, uh, in some edge cases, it doesn't work. So and the thing is, uh, first, uh, we don't know when we tap into this telemetry stream. So if we get a connection to the ground station, the satellite is already sending data. So uh, it, it also sends the data probably before it gets contact to the ground station. Uh, sometimes it does it on request, but sometimes it sends frames already before. So if we tap in here in this stream, then we cannot start here at the beginning so we have to take this first data pointer into account and then as we can't really say what this data is yeah we can't parse it because we don't have the previous frame we have to throw this away and start parsing here on this part right okay uh, so that's the one thing and the second thing is and it's a little bit more um uh, nasty is uh, satellite transmissions are lossy or can be lossy. And this is not an exceptional part, so, but this is a normal use case. So if I'm, imagine that you have uh, even a TM frame before this, then you have this TM frame and then you have this TM frame. And for some reason, this frame gets lost in the transmission, so we don't get it. Yeah. So we have to detect that there is a frame missing, and we can do that with help of the frame counts in the header. Um, so if we detect that this frame is missing, then we start basically from fresh and we have to again take this first header pointer into account. Yeah? If the frames are in sequence, everything is fine, then we can just uh, concatenate these parts together and pass them. And that's it then. So um, it's a little bit more convol uh, convoluted and we have to do this by hand. We can't do this with the normal autoparser conduit because we have to take the error cases into consideration. Okay. Um, so for this video, is it, I don't want to make it too long, we just uh, do the, the gap check and that's it. Yeah. So um, let's do this in the chains file we had last time. So let's let's uh, say we have this gap check C conduit, which is a conduit T and which gets a TM frame meta with this meta information, as you remember, hopefully. And then we have uh, we deliver also a TM data frame in a monad. Yeah. So for now, let's say that M is just a monad. We will see if we need. Uh, well, we need probably. Well, we do that. Okay. So let's fire up GHCID. And. Let's save this. So <clears throat> the thing is also when we start uh, this gap check, um, on the first run, we don't, we haven't had a previous frame, so we don't know the current frame count. So the idea of the gap, the, 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 the gap check is we have the frame count of the previous frame and we have the frame count of the current frame. And if the frame count of the previous frame plus one is equal to the, to the current frame, then we are good. And otherwise we have a gap. So we have then to indicate this somehow. Um, uh, so this means we have to loop somehow and pass this, this old uh, virtual channel frame count as a parameter. And I want to do that, don't want to do that in the outside. So let's do a worker wrapper pattern. So we go. And as we want to indicate that at first we don't have anything, let's make this a maybe word eight value. Okay. There we go. Uh, and then we have the old VCFC. And this is a maybe, so I mark it with a prime for now. And then um, first thing is we, of course, we need to get a frame from upstream. So we, we await, we check this. Uh, if it is nothing, this means we should terminate this, the, the, 
the process the conduit chain. So we just uh, pure um, return the unit. And if we have a meta frame, then we have to process it. So the first thing is we would like to get the current uh, virtual channel frame count out of. So let's uh, VCFC, virtual channel frame count. So we have this meta, we call uh, meta frame so that we get the frame out of it. And um, then we call, we have the frame, from the frame we need to call the, the header. So I think it's called frame header, right? And, uh, or let's do it. Let's do it with function composition. And then we need to get out from the frame header, and I always forget how I name things. So we need to get out this virtual channel frame count. So, chains, virtual channel frame count. Right. And also, let's make it strict. Okay. So and now we have to check it against this old value. So this is also a maybe. So we have to check it. Case old VCFC of uh, if this is a nothing. This means we are at the beginning. We don't have a, a frame count. So all we can do is we can just loop over and set this new frame count we currently have as the old frame count. So we, what we do is go uh, just VCFC. Right, and then if we have just a uh, old VCFC, then we need to do something different. So then we have to do this comparison, and let's check this also. So if uh, old VCFC plus one equals VCFC, then we do something, and in the other case, we also do something. So. Uh, why this works and we don't need to handle the overflow uh, because um, the if you have a look into the frame header again this virtual channel frame count is a word 8 so this is one byte unsigned this means uh, it goes from 0 to 255 and then it wraps over and starts at 0 again so you have a very short cycle in principle and uh, the thing is that word 8 is defined, uh, unsigned is defined that is uh, also over wraps. So it does exactly the same. So if we go to, if the old virtual channel frame count is 255 and the new one is 0, uh, 255 plus 1 is, is then 0 again, the over wrap, and then this still works. So we should be good with that. And um, okay, so if this is the case, then what we do is just we yield this meta frame downwards. We don't have to do anything. And then we have to loop over again with the new frame count, which is then the old frame count for the next iteration. And in the else case, um, so we have now detected if this is not the case, if these are not equal, uh, then we have a gap. And uh, so what do we do with this gap? We have to dis indicate this somehow to downstream. And the thing is, I want to store this in the TM frame meta, and we currently have field for this. So let's change this quickly. So we have, yeah, here's the TM frame meta. So what we do is we add a meta gap. Ah, also forgot about this. Let's make this strict. Um, the meta gap, and let's say this is a maybe, and I want to have the old value and the new value. So word eight and the word eight. So this is a pair of word eight. Right. And um, of course, uh, the meta frames are generated here. And here we don't have any gap information. So um, meta gap. In this case, we simply set it to nothing. Good. So here, uh, now we have to go to the else. So we, we have to update the meta frame. So let's say we have a new meta, which is meta. And the meta gap is in this case just the old VCFC and the VCFC. The old value, new value. Uh, and then we yield this new frame. 
and loop over. And we loop over again with the new value, which will be the old value for the next iteration. Right. Okay, so that's basically it. So let's copy that. So let's see, we have your chain here currently for the virtual channel itself. So this is this chain is uh, let's go here is this one. So we insert the gap check here and then we have the pretty show, right? So we just add this here and that compiles and it should work basically, hopefully. Let's see. So um, let's quickly check that with with our our files. So stack run. Let's see. And then we need to start the server again. Yes, we are reconnecting. So um, let's first try with our initial file, the tm dump signal. Um, pipe it to netcat. Zoom. And now we should get, yes, we get the frames. And you see everything is nothing, 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 nothing. And this is expected, so the, the, the frame counts uh, 133, 134, so they strictly count up. So this is expected. Uh, let's check this with the other file. We have this, uh, we have this other file and this file I was a little bit lazy, so uh, which contains different virtual channels. Uh, I was lazy, so I did just a small file and then binary copied this file multiple times and concatenated it together. So uh, as these are always the same, we will have gaps there, basically, because it's always the same frame count. Uh, no, I think I have two packets on each virtual channel. And so so there should be one, one OK, and then we should have a gap and so on. Let's try this. I'm um, Premiere. Let's see if this is really the case. So we tm dump multi virtual channel raw. Let's start the server and also stack run this. And you see we have a gap 91, 93. And here we don't have a gap on virtual channel 7 for this. And here we have also not the, and don't, don't have a gap. And here we have a gap and, and so on. Yeah. And you see the old value and the new value. Uh, so the thing is, this file is large. So this, uh, until the match again, so the because we have only a eight bit count, so two hundred fifty five values, this could wrap around several times. So the distance is not that reliable. But uh, you have at least an indication that there is a gap, and um, you could tell something. So this is why the seven is larger than the six, or here the ninety three is larger than the ninety one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that works. That's very good. Um, I think that's for, for this session, this is okay. Um, for the next session, we will then go into the implementation of the full extraction of post packets out of the telemetry transfer frames. And you will see this is a little bit more convoluted and takes some time. That's why I split this video into two. Uh, so thanks for watching.